In an era of science and enlightenment, magic has been totally debunked. But that makes it even more impressive when illusionists manage to astound us with sleight of hand and mentalism. From simple card tricks to full-scale Las Vegas magic shows, there are many tricks which have never been effectively explained. Today, we're counting down the 10 most impressive magic tricks ever performed. This is a multi-part magic trick that leaves viewers scratching their heads. Magician David Copperfield took a number of precautions to ensure the audience's doubts were assuaged. First, he brought a random contestant on stage. The contestant's father had written to Copperfield, stating that he had been a bad parent and wanted to make it up to his son by taking him to Hawaii. To fulfill this wish, Copperfield committed to taking the boy to Hawaii via teleportation live in front of the audience. To calm any skeptics, Copperfield kept a live feed of the beach in Hawaii on a jumbotron. On top of this, he threw balls into the audience at random to choose volunteers and had fans draw pictures and take photos, all of which he would take to Hawaii to prove the trick was not pre-filmed. Then Copperfield and the lucky contestant step onto a floating platform to prove there is no trapdoor. After a countdown, the pair disappear from sight, only to reappear on the beach with the drawings and Polaroids intact. After the reunion of the audience member with his father, Copperfield appears back in the audience on the other side of the stage. Then it starts raining in the theatre. While many theories have been introduced to explain the trick, none have been confirmed. Almost 20 years later, this magic trick remains a mystery. On their lucrative Fool Us tour and corresponding video release, Las Vegas-based magicians Penn and Teller wowed the crowds with over two hours of show-stopping magic tricks. But perhaps their most famous trick is the infamous Magic Bullet Catch. The trick begins with the magicians bringing two audience members on stage. Both have a military background and are given a purse full of bullets, which they confirm are real. Then the pair write their names on the tip of a bullet and draw a picture on the shell. Then the magicians set up two identical glass panes on either side of a yellow line. The audience members are given guns to inspect, which are then loaded with their newly decorated bullets. Now comes the crazy part. After putting on bulletproof vests, Penn and Teller shoot the bullets into each other's mouths, catching the round with their teeth. The audience members verified that the panes of glass were broken, thus proving that a shot was fired through them. Then they smell the bullet casing to prove it was recently fired, and finally they verify the bullets themselves with the drawings and names. While Penn and Teller bring a new approach to this trick, variations have been in practice since at least the 1500s. Over the years, new magicians will accomplish the trick in new ways, but they never fail to impress the audience. The Indian rope trick rose in popularity in the 1890s as explorers told tales of East Indian men who could climb an unsupported rope into thin air. The trick usually goes through several predictable steps. The conjurer sits cross-legged in an open space. He throws one end of a coil of rope into the air and about 15 feet of it remains stiff like a pole. An assistant climbs the rope and balances himself at the extremity. At a word from the conjurer, he vanishes and is discovered in a basket or comes running into the crowd from a distant spot. Then at a signal, the rope crumples to the ground. There is a more colourful version than this which insists that the conjurer pretends to be angry with the assistant. He climbs up the rope with a knife between his teeth and on reaching the top, both he and the assistant disappear. Agonising screams are heard from above, then a leg falls and an arm, another leg and arm together with the remainder of the boy's body. The conjurer reappears and climbs down the rope, covered with blood. He assembles the limbs and trunk, which at once becomes complete and alive. The rope crumples and is packed away in a basket. The trick is still alive after more than a century, with several prominent figures offering more than $400,000 to see it explained. This is another classic from Penn and Teller's Fool Us Tour. It is a relatively simple trick, but that doesn't make it any less amazing. This illusion is performed exclusively by the often mute Teller. He appears on a low-lit stage with a carving knife and a single flower, which is front-lit by a bright bulb projecting its shadow onto a screen behind Teller. Silently, Teller approaches the flower. 
Rather than cutting the leaves off of the flower directly, he pierces his knife into the screen. Miraculously, as he cuts off the leaves on the screen, the exact same leaves fall from the flower. The audience gasps as he moves from leaf to leaf, slowly dismantling the flower. Finally, Teller goes in for the kill. He pierces the budding flower's shadow, and its petals fall off one by one. Penn has stated that no one knows how shadows is done, and no one will ever figure it out. So far, that challenge remains intact. Rumors circulated that a Dutch magician was performing a similar trick, but this was quickly debunked. It is also allegedly the trick that led Teller to remain silent on stage, because he believes it helps the viewer to concentrate on the trick rather than on his speech. David Berglas is considered one of the forefathers of modern magic. His secret technique of locating a particular card within a pack has been described as the holy grail of card magic. He was one of the first magicians to appear on UK television. His namesake trick is also called Any Card at Any Number. It begins with him showing a full deck of cards to the audience. Then an audience member is chosen at random. They name whichever card they want in the deck. A second spectator then names a number between 1 and 52. A third spectator is encouraged to count down to the previously mentioned number. The cards are on view the entire time. There are multiple variations, but usually Burgas has an audience member hold the deck of cards to prove there is no sleight of hand. Invariably, however, after the third member counts down the number of cards, he pulls up the first audience member's card. Many have attempted to explain this trick away as simple card counting, but that doesn't account for the random variable of the audience member's guesses. Regardless of how it's pulled off, it has served as David Berger's signature card trick. Richard Osterlind is a mentalist who has been performing for major corporations for more than 35 years. He has appeared at the Sheraton Great Wall in Beijing, the Hotel de Paris in Monte Carlo, the Casa de Campo in the Dominican Republic, and many other luxury resorts around the world. He is a speaker, author, teacher of magic and mentalism, and creator of many magic effects. He may not be a household name, but Richard is very well known with the mentalist and magician community. Potentially, his best trick is the penny bender, wherein he asks an audience member to scratch a penny on both sides using a key. This is to verify that he is using the same penny and not switching it out with a decoy. Then, before the audience's eyes, he bends the penny in his palm using only his index finger. Osterland has had NFL players and bodybuilders attempt to bend the penny, but they cannot. This trick, like many others, is still unexplained. David Blaine is an American magician, illusionist and endurance artist. He is best known for his high-profile feats of endurance and has set and broken several world records. Blaine innovated the way magic is shown on television by focusing on spectator reactions. His idea was to turn the camera around on the people watching instead of the performer to make the audience watch the audience. This is perfectly illustrated in his trick, Pulling Teeth. In a crowd of people, Blaine finds a volunteer and somewhat gruesomely pulls their teeth from their mouth. Onlookers gasp as he holds the teeth in his hand and the volunteer remains stunned. Blaine then ups the stakes by placing the loose teeth in his own mouth and spitting them back into place. The audience absolutely loses control at this point, as he has just performed the impossible. Of course, some posit that the volunteer is actually a planted assistant, but that doesn't explain the mechanics of moving and replacing the teeth in their mouth. This deviates from Blaine's main attractions, which usually involve feats of dehydration, asphyxiation or extreme cold. His pulling teeth trick is a good old-fashioned illusion. The chop cup routine brought much acclaim to British magician Paul Daniels in the early 80s. He was awarded the prestigious Magician of the Year Award by the Hollywood Academy of Magical Arts in 1983. He also won the Golden Rose of Montreux in 1985. Daniels begins by picking a volunteer from the audience. The volunteer is asked to keep their eyes on a tiny white ball throughout the trick. Using an ordinary cup, Daniels launches into a rapid-fire routine wherein the ball appears beneath the cup 
in Daniel's hand, and everywhere in between, seeming to break the laws of physics. He then plays the trick out in slow motion, with the same results. The audience is impressed, but the biggest trick of all comes when Daniels replaces the ball with a lemon. Though the trick is relatively simple, it is buoyed by Daniels' showmanship. Clearly, there is some sleight of hand involved, but most people are unable to guess how the trick is truly performed. We've already seen David Copperfield on the countdown, but given his impressive history, it was difficult to narrow his tricks down to just one. The most successful magician in history, Copperfield has racked up $1 billion in career earnings, busted 10 world records, and amassed a whole host of awards for his work as a theatrical entertainer. While floating unsupported and making the Statue of Liberty miraculously vanish were dazzling feats, there is one trick so endemic to Copperfield's legend that he legally purchased the rights to the illusion. The Death Saw It was originally performed in his 1988 special The Magic of David Copperfield, The Bermuda Triangle. The trick has been recreated so many times in popular culture that it's hard to believe the genesis was so recent. In this world-class illusion, the magician lies flat on his stomach on a board as a whirring saw blade swings towards him. The blade bisects Copperfield at the midriff, only for his assistance to push the two halves back together. Copperfield then rises for his prestige, whole and unscathed. While it's been proven that Copperfield relies on an assistant to function as his lower half, the trick is still classic and has set the tone for much of modern magic. Liu Chen is a Taiwanese magician and is credited to be the only Taiwanese magician to perform in Hollywood's Magic Castle. He is commonly referred to as Taiwan's most renowned magician. Liu Chen first became interested in magic at the age of seven when he was attracted by a magic shop while shopping with his aunt. He proceeded to enter and saw the shopkeeper make coins disappear, and when confronted, the shopkeeper pulled a lollipop from behind his ear. From then, he began working on his magic skills and at the age of 12, he won Taiwan's Youth Magic Contest, which was judged by world-famous magician David Copperfield. In an interview, Liu Chen said that, This win was profoundly meaningful for me. It encouraged me to carry on my magic show dream. It showed me that my efforts could eventually lead to success. Perhaps his most distinctive trick is called coins. Over the course of the stunt, Chen is able to make coins pass through objects, like a table, a volunteer's hand. Like many tricks, it's clear that Chen is using some kind of sleight of hand, but that doesn't make it any less impressive. <laughs>